All right, you wonderful cinema guns. Let's talk about gender. <laughs> okay, 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 look, I, I get it. We're all tired of self-righteous wannabe animator critics getting on their political soapbox and talking shit about our precious, precious children's cartoons, okay? I, I get it. But sometimes there's merit to having that discussion. And in Jellystone's case, there is one very important and significant reason to open up this conversation. It's a damn good show! So what is Jellystone, you ask? Well, it basically takes every single property from the Hanna-Barbera franchise, stuffs them all into a single town, and boom, shenanigans! Lots and lots of shenanigans! I mean, the cartoon is being coined by C.H. Greenblatt, the dude behind Chowder, so you can pretty much guess that this show is going to be unhinged as all fuck. It's clever, there's a lot of visual humor, the art style harks back to the original 60s design without compromising what makes modern animation so effective these days. It's just a really good cartoon, eh? But there was one very prominent change that caught everybody's eye, including myself. And that change is that they roll 63'd a lot of the dude characters. Yeah, so Jabberjaw, Augie Doggy, Squiddly Diddly, one and a half of Top Cat's crew, they doped up on estrogen, grew some eyelashes, and boom, instant chicks. And you know what? I think it works. And look, we all know this is a well-intentioned effort from the showrunner's part to make the show more progressive, you know, gender equality and all that. Like, I remember the DuckTales reboot doing this kind of thing, where they took the original basic white dude characters and race-swapped them. So, this isn't something that's completely unheard of these days. But as far as I'm concerned, these changes don't really do any harm, because as long as the show does what it does, and in this case, be extremely funny, I think it's welcome. Now, I know there's gonna be a lot of purists out there that are like, These characters outside the public consciousness for 20-some years have been mildly altered. My entire childhood has been invalidated! And in response to that, I feel like I must pose a very critical question. In all possible entitled respect, does anybody actually give a Doink. sh** about the Hanna-Barbera characters? Look, don't get me wrong, okay? I'm sure there's a lot of super fans out there that are completely obsessed with uh, Snagglepuss or uh, Shazan or you know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. I I'm just saying, a lot of these guys haven't been on the air for like two decades or so. So like, I think there's a reason that they aren't as relevant these days. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not gonna deny that the Hanna-Barbera characters had an astounding prominence during the days of primetime television. But like, they haven't exactly aged like fine wine. And like, Greenblatt actually outlined a lot of my thoughts about the Hanna-Barbera franchise in this Variety article he did. Now, I I'ma paraphrase a lot just because there's a lot of ground to cover, but here are the key points to this. You can't completely revitalize everything about Hanna-Barbera piece by piece because a lot of it was, uh, not perfect. Like, it, it had problems, alright? It, it had problems. And as far as the gender thing goes, I agree with what Greenblatt is going for here. Like, let's be real. OG Hanna-Barbera was a giant sausage fest, alright? Like, yeah, they had a few female characters, but a lot of them were ancillary, you know? They were they were love interests, they were sidekicks, uh, they were just, like, making the dudes look better, basically. Now, don't get me wrong, some of the female characters were really good, and we love them now. But for the most part, they couldn't really carry their own story, you know? And, like, I can totally see Greenblatt's philosophy on when to change things up and when not to change things up. So... You don't fuck around with the money makers. Scooby-Doo, the Flintstones, Yogi Bear. These guys that became cultural icons, you know, they became popular for a reason, so you don't want to mess around too much with what they have. Now as for the others, a lot of them were like the Scooby-Doo clones, as we call them. There were clones of Scooby-Doo, which were clones of the other clones, and those clones were clones of the other clones. They didn't really have too much character to begin with, so that's why they fell off the wayside. At least that's how I think. So for those guys, you can afford to mix up the personalities a bit, okay? I think you got leeway for that. Now, as for the characters with virtually no personality, you know what I say? Free real estate, baby! I, I know on the forefront it feels like blasphemy to change up the personalities of these classic characters, you know? But here's the thing. 
A lot of these legacy characters are templates. As long as you adhere to their very baseline personalities, you can change things up to fit the iteration you're working on. Scooby-Doo does this thing all the time. Every movie feels different. Every TV show feels different. Every spin-off is another spin-off of the other spin-off. Even the studio mascots like Bugs Bunny or Mickey Mouse. They change up the tone, the aesthetic, the format of whatever show or movie they're working on as long as they meet that fundamental essence of the character. And that's why I think Jellystone succeeds at this whole gender bending thing. Like, it's not doing it just for woke points, or furry points for that matter, except for Loopy the Loop. Whew. It's doing it mainly for legit storytelling purposes. Like, the way I see it, gender doesn't change anything that wasn't already there. And look, I'm not saying it's a perfect resolution. I can see some poor implications about gender essentialism floating around that comes with taking a cis male character and turning them into a assumedly cis female character. And alternatively, I see some very lovely trans headcanons for a lot of these young gals. And you know what? Keep doing what you're doing. I love it. Love the content. Do what you gotta do. Run with it. Now, if you're one of those Hanna Barbera cartoon otakus that I alluded to earlier who genuinely feel betrayed by all of this, then yeah, sucks to be you. But legit, if it's any consolation at all and helps ease the pain a bit, you should probably know Jellystone wasn't made for you. At least not exclusively for you. This cartoon was made for those who have a passing knowledge of Hanna-Barbera as opposed to a more intricate knowledge of its characters. And that's why the argument of <clears throat> just make new female characters doesn't really hold much weight. Look, the thing about Jellystone is that it's trying to revitalize the franchise, not rebuild it from the ashes of Hanna-Barbera's corpse, you know? In the vast cosmic scope of the universe, the Hanna-Barbera characters are more recognized by the image they represent. A bygone era of primetime TV animation. And you know what? Regardless of everything I just said, the only true universal thing about all of this really is that Jellystone is hilarious. What more could you ask for? Oh yeah, one more thing. If you try to tell me that Oggy Doggy and Daddy Doggy aren't adorable as all hell, fuck off. Hey, so like, I just want to thank everybody who subscribed to my channel, and pretty much anybody really who watches these dumb videos of mine. You probably noticed, but I've been trying to play around with my style a little bit, you know? Be a little more candid, more off the cuff, you could say. I just feel like, I just feel like it makes myself feel more authentic, you know? So yeah, I, I apologize if the stuttering is kind of, uh, annoying, you know? I don't really, I'm not good at talking unscripted, if you can probably tell. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you guys want to see more content, leave a like, a comment, and hit that subscribe button. If not, I still love you. But, you know, there's also a Patreon that I have, so uh, check it out when you have a moment, you know? Or don't. Just do, just do what's comfortable, you know? But anyway, thanks again. Stay tuned.